A lot of my students have asked me if I would uh, give them some information about the required structure uh, and uh, the required elements of their essay. Now I'm aiming this slideshow at uh, students who would be attending um, and submitting essays in one of my philosophy of law classes, political philosophy, uh, or ethics classes. I'm Bruce Toombs and this is how to structure your essay. First of all, look. Obviously, you have to have these elements. Um, we'll talk about the title page in a minute. I, I require a title page on my essays. Uh, you want to have an introduction. You want to have an essay body, a conclusion. And of course, in the essay body, you want to have in-text references. And after the conclusion, you want to have a bibliography. So we'll talk about each of these elements and uh, we'll go through it as quickly as we can without skimping. First of all, title page. Now I know that the MLA format no longer tend, no longer requires necessarily a title page. However, I do require it. And I will take off points if you don't include a title page on your essay. There will be uh, points also removed if the uh, following information isn't part of the title page. That is to say, you have to have your essay title, your name needs to be there, the course title and the course number need to be there, my name needs to be there, and the date you submitted the essay needs to be there. Please, for the essay title, don't just write philosophy essay. Give me a title that's at least a little bit interesting. Show a little creativity, please. Now, let's talk about each of these. First of all, the introduction. Um, the introduction obviously must have your research question and your thesis. Remember that the essay is about the research question and the essay is going to be an argument of which the thesis is the conclusion. So the essay proves the thesis but it is about the research question. So both of these are important. That's why you have to include them both. You want to have an overview of the argument that you're going to be offering. In that overview, you want to give this the various points that you're going to raise, but you don't want to give them in great detail because that's what the rest of the essay is for. You need just to point the reader in the direction that you're going to go in so that when your reader is looking at what you're writing, the reader's not going to be surprised. Right? You want to send that person down the path that you intend to walk. By the way, the best time to write the introduction is after you've written everything else. Now, um, why is that? The reason for that is at the end of the process, you know what you wrote. And so you go back and you write your introduction, which tells me what you're going to have written. You see what I mean? So um, if you can write your introduction at the end after you've written everything else, that's the best way to go. Some people find that hard to do because they say, oh, the introduction is the start and I have to write it. Okay, fine. Write the introduction at the beginning, but be ready to go back and change it if you do something in the essay that isn't quite what you thought you were going to be doing when you write your introduction. I'm not going to know that you wrote your introduction last or that you changed it after you had finished the essay. And if you can improve your introduction to make it reflect what actually is going on, that's very important. The worst thing you can have is an in, in terms of your introduction is an introduction that tells me you're going to do something that you then don't do in the paper or even worse, that contradicts what you then end up doing in the paper. So be really careful about that. Now, in the introduction, you want to include any necessary background, any necessary context that the paper needs to be understood or to make sense. This could be historical background. This could be something about the philosophers you're going to discuss. This could be something about the debate between the philosophers. So if you're doing the debate between, let's say, H.L.A. Hart and Lon Fuller about the role of morality in law, then uh, you might talk a little bit about the fact that they had this debate and when they had it and the fact that it was held in the, in the uh, pages of the Harvard law, law Review or something like that. But whatever you do needs to be relevant to what you're going to do and it can't take up too much space. So really be careful and be... Um, be conc concise when you're writing your introduction. Um, you might need to give some terminology, by the way, that uh, needs defining. You might need to give some basic concepts. You might need to outline some, some uh, uh, basic background. So just do what you need to do. 
the point of all of that is to tell me, the reader, why I should care about this essay. Why does this essay matter? Now, remember, your essay isn't going to be something that's just straightforward, or you wouldn't be writing it. The essay is going to have a controversy in it, but you have to make sure that your reader actually cares about that controversy. So, moving along. I'm going to have several slides about the body of the essay here, but we won't go into too much depth. Obviously, the body of the essay is where the argument actually is that you were using in your, uh, in your introduction. This is, uh, this is the place where you write about everything you need to talk about. And honestly, if the thing you're writing isn't about the research question, or if it isn't something that tends to show that the thesis is true, get rid of it. It's not part of your essay. The essay has to be written from the point of view of, or in some way applying some kind of important principle or theory that comes from the class or that you can know in the context of the class. Okay, if not, then um, again, you run a very strong risk of going off topic. And so please be careful about that. You don't have to write three paragraphs. You don't have to have three points. You need to write the argument that you need to write. Uh, I prefer shorter paragraphs to long ones and just make sure that the thing is very, very, very clear. So moving along. Notice I care about clarity. If you have a very clear essay, if your essay is easy to understand and has a, has a structure that is easy to follow, if your essay is written in a very clear way, if the language is precise, if the grammar is correct, if the vocabulary is what you want it to be, if the style is, is engaging, that can make the difference between a C and a B or a B and an A. You really, really, it can actually make the difference between a C and an A. You really, 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 really want to make sure that your essay is clear. So, do not write to impress your teacher. Write to say something that is actually what needs to be said. Use straightforward language. Do not use fancy language. Short, clear sentences are always better than long ones. Short paragraphs are better than complex paragraphs. If you have to choose, make it clear, make it simple, make it direct. I like to tell people not to use a $100 word if a perfectly good 10 cent word is available, if it means the same thing. And I think that's something you should take into account. One way you can deal with this is to ask yourself the question, would someone else, roughly at my level, relatively intelligent, like me, somebody who's as smart as I am, would that person understand this essay? You're not being asked to write a paper that's publishable. You're not being asked to write a paper at the level that your teacher could write the paper. You're not being asked to write it at a university level. You're being asked to write it at the level of the SAGEP class that you're taking. That means that another student at the same level you're at should, in principle, be able to understand the paper you're writing. So you should write it with that in mind. Ask yourself, can this other student understand this paper? If so, you're probably clear enough. Now, that's not a guarantee, but it's a good it's a good indication. If you can also explain the paper in other words than the ones you used in the paper, that's a good sign too, because it shows that you've really understood it. Um, also, if you can do that, then you can, all, you can sometimes see whether or not you actually should change the way you've written it. But these are some of the tips. So you, you really need to try to make sure that your essay is as clear as it can possibly be. Now, in philosophy, reasonable people disagree. You are writing an argumentative paper, which means your thesis is your conclusion, the paper is the argument. But your argument, if it's an argument worth writing, is going to be one that's not just obvious. There are going to be other points of view. You have to take them into account as they become relevant. So if, when you're writing your paper, you discover that there's a viewpoint that challenges your paper, then you want to at least acknowledge that and try to respond to it to some extent. It's always a good idea to take account of any objection that challenges your thesis and 
respond to that objection. Now, you might not be able to deal with them all, and that'll help. That's something that'll come up in the conclusion, perhaps. But you definitely need to deal with some of them when they arise. If you do that, that will be that will make your essay stronger. Uh, but don't do it just to do it. Don't make up a weak argument that you're then going to respond to. Don't have an objection just to have an objection. It needs to be relevant, and it needs to be something that uh, actually arises from your argument. Now, also remember, your point of view isn't just what you think. It's what you can actually build the argument around. Your point of view should be whatever you think is the strongest argument. In high school, people will sometimes be asked to write papers in which they give two sides of an argument and then say their opinion. And they actually get points just for having an opinion. Often they don't prove what their they don't prove that their opinion is the more reasonable one, they just have it. You have to actually prove that your point of view is reasonable. So you don't get points for just having a, a point of view, you get points for demonstrating your point of view. So keep that in mind as you're writing your paper. This is philosophy. In philosophy, the strongest argument is what should always win. So you're going to get to the end of the paper, you're going to write your conclusion. Now, you're obviously going to review the argument. It's not just going to be a summary, although you also will summarize your argument. You're going to, in the context of summarizing your argument, you're going to try to say why this argument mattered. In other words, give me, a, give me something to, to chew on again at the end. If it's a really good paper, you'll relate, relate it back to the introduction and to something that's gone right through the whole paper. And that is then going to uh, be the thing that you bring out in the conclusion. That's often going to then lead you to an unanswered question. And uh, it's a very important thing in the conclusion to acknowledge that you haven't dealt with absolutely everything there is to say. Um, there is going to be something that you weren't able to cover, and you can raise that in the conclusion. You're never raising new information in the conclusion. Nothing in the conclusion should be new. The conclusion should be about the paper. That means that your unanswered question, the conclusion should be about the paper you just wrote, not about something new. That means that the unanswered question should be something that comes out of your argument. So when you raise it, it shouldn't be something that seems surprising, even if it's the first time you're mentioning it. It should be something that obviously, or that you can show, really does come out of the paper. And so it needs to be pertinent to what you've been writing. But um, the, a well-written conclusion wraps up a paper very nicely and uh, can really boost your mark as well. Then, of course, at the end of that, you're going to have your bibliography. And, of course, during the paper, you've been giving references to your research to show where you got um, some of your arguments, where you got some of your ideas. Perhaps you've been putting two philosophers against each other and showing why one is right and one is wrong, whatever you've been doing. You're going to have been using these references. So if you look at the bottom of the slide, you'll see the references in MLA format have to be in-text parenthetical references. Something I didn't do in this slide is I didn't give you a page number. I should have. It would be Hart 1961, comma, page 102, or whatever, right? So um, generally, you're going to want to give a page number if you can. A URL should not appear in the parenthetical comments. It should appear in the bibliography. Um, the title should only appear here if there's no author and so on and so on and so on, right? Be sure that you have followed correct MLA format. Otherwise, it just makes your essay unwieldy and a little too heavy. Uh, so be careful about that. Now, your bibliography is not the annotated bibliography that you submitted before, but it needs to include at least two of the references from your annotated bibliography, and those two references need to have actually been used, those two sources, rather, need to have actually been used in the paper. If they haven't been, then you will lose points. Okay, and that was, a, that was something that was announced right at the beginning when the assignment was being given. So you shouldn't be surprised by this. Your paper needs to have at least three research sources, which means stuff you found. You can bring the textbook in. You can bring in stuff that I distributed to the class at the beginning of the semester, but that's in addition to the research sources that you found yourself, okay? So research sources mean you found it, 
stuff that you got off the website that I the off the college website of that I gave you rather stuff that you got from that because I distributed it stuff from the textbook that doesn't count as a research source for the purposes of this essay you can use them but you you must use at least three research sources it has to be formatted according to bibliography according to the MLA format so um, if you look at the uh, library website you'll find that they have a guide for using MLA uh, format and I've uh, given you an image of it here and I've pointed an arrow at it. Also, uh, when you're using an online source, so you're using an article you got from a database, you're using a website, you're using an online an electronic book that you got from a database or, or uh, from uh, the web, whatever, if you found it online, you must absolutely give a correct URL, which is the web address, that will take me to that source when I click on it. And I strongly recommend that you test these links before you submit your paper. Um, because if I can't go to the site to the source by clicking on the link, then you stand a chance of losing some marks there too for faulty referencing. Now again, I know that uh, MLA format doesn't always require the URL. I require it. Um, that's because I'm going to go and read your sources. So if you want to get the correct URL for a database that you're going, if you're in one of the databases at the college, uh, they're going to have a link in ProQuest. I've shown it to you here. They've got a link called Site. Um, and uh, if you go there, it opens up a window and it actually can give you the MLA formatted uh, reference for that uh, source. And you'll find that the correct URL is there. The correct URL is not always the, uh, the web address at the top of the screen. Sometimes that's just uh, way too long and detailed and it's only connected to the specific search you were doing. And if I click there, it's not going to take me to your source. So you need to make sure that you've got the correct URL. One of the ways to be sure of that is to use this site link uh, when you're in a database. So I recommend that you find those and use them. Aside from that, I think we've basically covered all the bases. I'm looking forward to reading your essays, and I wish you luck in writing them. I'm available if you have questions, and I welcome all comments on this as well. Ciao.